How's it going guys? My name is Josh Brooks and I'm the Digital Marketing Director here at Hardhead Veterans. There's a lot of confusion in our world about the difference between a UHMW PE helmet and a Kevlar helmet. So today we cut a couple in half and we're going to talk about it and we're going to show you some of the pros and cons of both systems. What you're seeing on screen right now is the raw materials for each system. The white fibrous material is UHMWPE, which stands for Ultra High Molecular Weight Polyethylene. Polyethylene materials are commonly used in grocery bags and milk jugs, but we wouldn't suggest trying to make a ballistic helmet out of either of those products. The green material is Aramid, which is most commonly referred to as Kevlar. Aramid is short for aromatic polyamide and it was developed back in the 1960s and first used in products like Nomex. Around a decade later, aramid fibers were developed into a product called Kevlar by a company you may have heard of called DuPont. Aramid is a tried and true material with a wide range of applications, but the general process to form a complex shape like a helmet with both materials is nearly identical. The main difference between these two fibers is that the strength to weight ratios for UHMWPE is about 40% higher than it is for aramid. Now this is highly dependent on which UHMWPE and aramid grades you might be comparing to one another, but it's a standard rule of thumb in most cases. What this directly translates to in our world of ballistic helmets is that you can create a much lighter weight helmet with the same penetration resistance by utilizing UHMWPE. This is also why we're starting to see rifle capable helmets in PE hitting the market, whereas the amount of aramid it took to defeat those same threats in a helmet form would be prohibitively heavy and thick. That said, a helmet has to do more than simply stop a projectile. We have to stop it without major deformation after the impact in order to protect the scalp, skull, and brain of the end user wearing the helmet. As you can see, this is entirely survivable. Aramid-based helmets tend to be stiffer than PE helmets, and because of this, we typically see less helmet shell deformation with them. This doesn't always equate to less back face deformation but that's because it's measured on the actual deformation of the clay head form that the helmet is placed on top of before testing. Remember, padding plays a major role in mitigating back face deformation to the skull as we talked about in this video. Bullets aren't the only thing you have to worry about impacting your helmet though. Fragmentation and shrapnel are still the primary threats on modern battlefields. These projectiles do not have the same type of energy as a speeding bullet, but they're just as dangerous. What you're seeing on screen right now is one of our recent combat saves from Ukraine. It shows just what fragmentation threats can do. The Ukrainian soldier that was wearing this helmet was struck by a near miss from a Stugna P anti-tank guided missile system that impacted roughly one meter above his head as he was climbing into the back of his fighting position. It was a rare case of friendly fire caused by the fog of war, but in this instance, the soldier survived the impact due to the helmet's ability to stop fragmentation from the missile. The way we test for this is V-50 testing. V50 is the nomenclature for testing against battlefield shrapnel and fragmentation. We fire small projectiles at increasing velocities until we figure out which velocity half of the fragmentation penetrates and the other half doesn't. When you compare a PE shell of equal thickness to an aramid one, not only will it be much lighter weight, but the V50 rating on the PE shell is going to be much higher. All helmets are built to protect against blunt impacts and PE and aramid helmets are the same. You might remember we had mentioned that aramid helmets tend to be stiffer than PE shells. Well, when it comes to blunt impacts, we typically see better performance out of the aramid helmets because of this. However, all armor testing comes with a butt. Helmet padding plays a significant role here as well. Another important comparison between PE and aramid is the cost. Not only is the cost of PE materials exponentially higher than that of aramid, it's also much more difficult to process correctly. It's one of the reasons you typically see made to order and long lead times on PE helmets because they take significantly longer to manufacture than their aramid counterparts. So Josh, quit talking. What's the better helmet material? I know, I know. Like most things, it depends on what you need the helmet for. PE helmets are most suited for individuals who are seeking a lightweight helmet where cost is definitely not an issue. The main thing those individuals are focusing on is hoofing it onto an objective where there's a high probability of direct contact from direct fire systems and fragmentation from indirect fire weapon systems. The nature of PE materials creates a high cost lightweight helmet system with a high resistance to penetration from both incoming rounds and fragmentation. 
Airman helmets, on the other hand, are an extremely cost-effective alternative that still provide great penetration protection. On top of the typically better back face deformation performance and blunt impact protection, these helmets can be mass-produced quickly due to the ease of working with the material. Airman helmets are great for the average concerned citizen who may need ballistic protection in a pinch, and for the law enforcement officer who only needs to wear his helmet a few hours a year. They're also great in times when helmets need to be produced quickly to protect a large number of troops being put into the field. That's all I got for you guys today on this topic, but before I go, I want to let you all know that we do offer a solution in both materials. Our Gen 2 ballistic helmets are an affordable and fast shipping all air emit option, and our ATE lights are a UHMWP option for those who don't mind spending a little extra and waiting a little longer for a lighter weight system. If you've got any questions, let me know down in the comment section, and while you're there, why don't you do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Our next video is going to be a brief history lesson on helmet up armor solutions, and I'm probably going to shoot a bunch of them on camera for you. So we'll see you in the next one.